In this video, I'm going to talk about the unit circle approach to defining trigonometric functions, and then talk about properties of those functions. So we've already discussed this generalized definition of the six fundamental trigonometric functions, where we have an angle in standard position, we pick whatever point we want on the terminal side of that angle, call that point a comma b, compute r, which is the distance from that point to a comma b, and then the sine, cosine, tangent, and so on are defined as ratios involving a, b, and r. In the unit circle approach, instead of letting ourselves choose whatever point we want on the terminal side, we specifically choose the point that is one unit away from the origin. So this tells us a specific point on that terminal side that we're talking about, and we're always able to say that that point is one unit away. All of the points that we could pick, depending on whatever angle we're looking for, since they all lie one unit away from the origin, they all lie on what we call the unit circle, which is the circle centered at the origin with radius one. The advantage of choosing this point with radius one, the point that's one unit away from the origin, is that it simplifies the formulas uh, involved, because instead of having an r, which is some mysterious number, depending on our choice of the point a comma b, now we know for sure that r is one, and so the formulas that we're looking at are a lot simpler. One thing to note are the formulas for sine and cosine. When we have the point a comma b on the unit circle, the x-coordinate of the point that we have is the cosine, so cosine is the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle, and the sine of theta is the y-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. And that's a really nice thing to have when we're traveling around this circle. We always know that the x-coordinate is the cosine of our angle and the y-coordinate is the sine of our angle. So for example, let's say that we had a, a point on our unit circle, an angle corresponding to the point 3 fifths comma negative 4 fifths. Let's just look at what the six trigonometric functions would be. So these are just those six formulas that we had on the earlier slide. So the sine of theta, that would be the y-coordinate, which is just negative 4 fifths. The cosine of theta, that would be the x-coordinate, which is 3 fifths. The tangent of theta, that's the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate, b divided by a, so that's negative 4 fifths divided by 3 fifths, I can multiply top and bottom by 5, clear out those denominators, and that gives me negative 4 thirds. And then all of our identities that we had before work, so probably the easiest way to figure out the cosecant of theta is that it's the reciprocal of the sine of theta. So instead of negative 4 fifths, we've got negative 5 fourths. The secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine of theta, so that's 1 over 3 fifths, which is 5 thirds. And then the cotan of theta, that's the reciprocal of the tangent of theta. So instead of negative four thirds, that gives us negative three fourths. So now let's think about these trigonometric functions as functions, right? So we've talked about some identities, we've talked about how to compute them, but we want to think of these as functions and think about what kind of properties these functions have. So every real number corresponds to a point on the unit circle, and so we can define the six trigonometric functions as a function of that value that corresponds to the angle. Now when we do this, we always want to use radians for our angles. There's a specific reason for this that relates to concepts in calculus, so it's a little bit hard to explain it in the context of just trigonometry, but it does make sense for us to think about these only in terms of radians. Okay, so what's the domain of a function in general? Uh, let me be specific here, by the way, I'm always going to use my variable t here for these functions, just because I'm also going to be referring to the point on the unit circle, which has x and y coordinates. So if I call my variable x, that might get a little bit confusing because you might not be sure which x I'm talking about. So when we talk about the domain, normally we're talking about x values. In this case, I'm going to use the variable t just to avoid that confusion. So in general, domain is the set of all t values for which the function is defined, everything that I am allowed to plug into my function. So because every angle corresponds to a point on the unit circle, and because the sine and cosine are the y and x coordinates of that point respectively, that's always going to be defined. The sine and cosine of any angle will always make sense because there will always be a point on my unit circle where those uh, corresponding to that angle. Unfortunately, the other four trigonometric functions will be undefined sometimes. For example, tangent and secant, because I'm dividing by a, any place where a is zero, in other words, any place where my x-coordinate is zero, namely when my angle leaves me on the y-axis, the secant and tangent will be undefined. Similarly, cotan and cosecant are dividing by b, 
And so any place B is zero, any place the Y coordinate of my point is zero, in other words, any point on the X axis, my cotan and cosecant will be undefined. So that means that the domain and sine and cosine are both the set of all real numbers. The domain of tangent and secant are the set of all real numbers except those angles that would leave me on the y-axis. So if I'm drawing my axes here, my unit circle, the points I would need to avoid are this point up here, 0, 1, and this point down here, 0, negative 1. Those would be points where my tangent and secant would be undefined because my definitions would have me dividing by 0. For cotangent and cosecant, the points that I need to, define, to avoid are this point over here, 1, 0, and this point over here, negative 1, 0. Those would be points on the x-axis, and by my definitions of cotangent and cosecant, I would be dividing by 0, and so those are the angles for which those functions are undefined. So what angles get me to those points? Well, 90 degrees, also known as pi over 2, would get me to 0, 1. 270 degrees, also known as 3 pi over 2, would get me to 0, negative 1, and so on. And I could also go clockwise. Negative 90 degrees, negative pi over 2, would also get me to the point 0, negative 1, and so on. So what we see here are the values that we need to avoid for tangent and secant are odd multiples of pi over 2. So pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on. Those are all places where tangent and secant would be undefined, as well as negative odd multiples. The angles that would get me to the points where cotangent and cosecant are undefined would be 0 degrees, or 0 radians, that gets me to the point 1, 0. 180 degrees, or pi radians, gets me to negative 1, 0. 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians, gets me to 1, 0, and so on. So the values that I need to avoid for cotangent and cosecant are integer multiples of pi. So those are the domains of my six fundamental trigonometric functions. What about periodicity? This isn't something that we normally encounter when we're thinking of the non-trigonometric functions that we see in normal algebraic study. We're talking about polynomials, exponentials, maybe logarithms. So those are things that don't have this periodicity property. But trigonometric functions do have this property, the property that when you add a particular number to your x value, you get the same thing as if you hadn't added that value. And if we look for the smallest possible value for which that occurs, we call that the period of this kind of function. All of our six fundamental trigonometric functions have this property. Because if I rotate an additional two pi radians from whatever angle I started at, that leaves me to the same point on the unit circle. And we've seen this before. If I add 4 pi, if I add 6 pi, if I add 8 pi, or if I subtract 2 pi, subtract 4 pi, and so on, I always get to the same point on my unit circle, and so that gives me the same values of my trigonometric functions. But tangent and cotangent actually have a smaller period. Because if I only rotate pi radians, if I rotate 180 degrees, now that gets me to a different point, but remember the tangent of my angle is b over a, which is the same as negative b over negative a. And cotangent of theta is a over b, which is the same as negative a over negative b. So for tangent and cotangent, if I rotate an additional 180 degrees, if I rotate an additional pi radians, then I get to a different point on the unit circle, but that's a point where the tangent and cotangent have the same value. So those two functions, tangent and cotangent, have period pi. The other four trigonometric functions have period 2 pi. Another property that we sometimes study for functions is odd and even. So an odd function has the property that when you plug in a negative of your input value, you get negative of the y value. An even function, if you plug in negative of your t value, that gives you the same y value. So these are called odd and even because x to an odd power has the odd property and x to an even power has the even property. So what about trigonometric functions? Well, it turns out that sine, tangent, cotangent, and cosecant are odd functions, and cosine and secant are even functions. And we can see this without too much trouble by looking at our unit circle again. So if we have a rotation of t radians, we'll just think of t as being a positive number, just for the sake of this illustration, and then negative t would be the corresponding clockwise rotation going in the other direction. So there's a symmetry here where my x-coordinates are the same, 
So both of these points have x coordinate a, but the y coordinates are different. The y coordinate of my rotation by t radians gets me to a comma b, the clockwise rotation gets me to a comma negative b. So the sine of negative t is going to be the y coordinate of that point, so that's going to be minus b, which is the uh, negative of the sine of t. But the cosine of negative t, that's the x coordinate of the point a comma negative b, that's just a, and that's the same as the cosine of t. And similarly, we can see the relationships for tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So in this video, we talked about the unit circle approach. It's just a way to be more definitive about what point we're talking about corresponding to our angle. Rather than allowing ourselves to choose whatever point we want on the terminal side, we're more specific and we choose the point that is one unit away from the origin. And then we also talked about several different properties of the six trigonometric functions. Next time, we're going to use these properties to create graphs of the six trigonometric functions. So we're going to go through sine and tangent in great detail, and then I'll show you the similarities between those graphs and the other four trigonometric functions. See you then.